these dirty motherfuckers. Oh, under the it's church, what was going on? Was People were getting fucking burnt under the church. That's, that's the deal of, dirty oh, that's the of Islam. How can you follow biggest a man drug that's dealers in the world? a nine-year-old child? Biggest drug dealers in the world. Answer that. Answer that. Answer that. Answer that. How can you, how can you follow a prophet that's led with a nine-year-old child? You, shut up. you dirty cunt. No answer. What did you achieve by being fucking waste, man? Did you hear him all say, you dirty Mexican cunt? Fuck you. You don't even have a license. The racism of the Dawa team. Right here. So the racism. Fuck you. Racist. You want to talk about racist? You want to talk about racist? The racism. You hate racism. You hate Asians. You want to talk about racist? You're the only one. You're the only one. You're the only one. You're the only one. That's what you say. You racist cunt. You're dirty me. This fuck has always blocked me on the forum. Here's a liberal. Progressive about, for you. He triggered me. Ah, I okay. call him a dirty Mexican Your cunt, mom. but it's his fault wife, because he triggered me. Mohammed had wife. sex with a nine-year-old child. That is pedophilia. Mohammed called You're Ethiopians raisin heads. That is racism. Mohammed called God Satan. A rugged looking black man! That's racism! Mohammed traded one Arab slave for two black ones! Mohammed taught that Christians and Jews are valued less than Muslims! We don't need lectures about Mohammed! We have Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ never had sex with a child! Jesus Christ taught the equality of all men. Jesus Christ never had a slave. We have a better example than Muhammad. But now that we're talking, now that we're talking, I have a question for you. I love you. God bless you, bro. God bless you. You need a better example than Mohammed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These cartels. What are you ever talking about your Mexican cartels, you mug? You fucking mug. Hey, you, Always blocking me on your fucking figure because you're a coward. You're a coward. I have a question for you. I have a question for you. You're a coward. Your Quran says something that's false. The Quran says something that's false. I want you to defend it. Oh, he's walking away. But let's ask the Muslim that pushed like your prophet. This guy was big enough to push me. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if he's big enough to answer my question. God. Okay, so I'm a Christian, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. and the book that I hold in my hand is the Quran. I believe that the Quran is false, and I'm going to, to go give my learn. evidence. You need your Christian. You Great. Need to go back so and you learn. can teach me. Brilliant. I will teach you. Fantastic. So but you know, you know what? I can't sorry. even teach you because. Oh, he can't. He can push me, but he can't teach me. No, 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 no. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so, answer this question. Really simple question, right? Everybody listen, because the Quran is about to tell a lie. Okay. And I want you to listen if you can hear the lie that the Quran mentions. Yeah. Here it is. Because as Christians, we know that it's false. This is what the Quran says. Stupid man. Those who follow the messenger. Who's the messenger? Prophet Muhammad. The prophet who can neither read nor write. Who's that? Prophet Muhammad. Whom they find written with them, with them, in the Torah and the Injil. What's the Injil? The Bible. Oh, yeah. So here you go. Here's my Bible. Yeah. Show me where Muhammad is in the Injil. Show me from the Quran where God says to kill women and children. Show me from the Quran where God says to kill women and children. You will find it in the Bible. You will find it in the Bible. Show me from the Quran. Wait, I've got him shouting behind me. Yeah, go on, go on. Show me from the Quran where it says to kill women and children. Show me, you fucking pagans. You dirty pagans. Show me. Okay. You know why? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. What are you responding? Because you, 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 you don't understand the question I've asked you. What are you come here. Let me ask. The question that I asked you was to show me in the Injil 
where Muhammad is. The Injil was given by who? Who gave, who gave the Injil? Who gave the Injil? According to the Quran. Isa, it's Isa Solomon. If it's in your Bible, are you rejecting it? Is Isa Solomon? If it's in your Bible, are you rejecting it? Is Isa Solomon? No, Isa is not Solomon. I asked you to show me in the Injil, you tried to go to Solomon. I'll go back to the Injil. So show me in the Injil where Muhammad is. kill women and children. Show me from the Quran where it says kill women and children. Right. I, I asked you about the Injil. He keeps saying, show me Solomon, but he knows the Injil was given by Jesus. So why does he keep going to the book of Solomon? The question is, show me in the Injil, because the Quran told a lie. The Quran said Muhammad can be found in the Injil. That's the New Testament. We can't find Muhammad in the New Testament. So the Quran is false. It speaks a lie. So I'll ask you again. Show me in the Injil. It is in the Injil. Where? Where? Is it your Bible or not? The chapter of Solomon isn't in the Injil. The chapter of Solomon is not in the Injil. So you can't answer the question. He can't answer the question. The two Muslims I asked earlier can't answer the question. Can any Muslim answer the question? The question is simple. The Quran says that the Sahaba found Muhammad in the Injil. Show me. If you can't show me, then that means the Quran has lied to you. And it is false. And if the Quran is false, it is not true. And you should renounce Islam. And you should look again at the Christian faith. Because the Christian faith does stand up to scrutiny. Our claims do stand up to scrutiny. Kill Where is he in the Injil? Show me. Where is he in the Injil? Show me from the Quran. No answer. Where, says, kill women Where is he in the Injil? Exactly. Where is he? Anyone? You any Muslim? You find it in your Bible. I'm not going to your ask Bible the lady in the niqab because it's wrong. Children. Can any Muslim Infants answer this and question? Donkeys. None of and them. Donkeys. No, no, no one. No one. No one. Not one of them. No one. And why can't they answer this question? Why, Bob? Because Muhammad is not in the Injil. That's right. The Quran is false. Which one? It says something that is untrue. And because it says something that is untrue, it is not from God. So now all Muslims need to deal with that question. If your religion, your holy book, states something that is evidently a lie, that is evidently false, then it means it's untrue. And why is it untrue? Because the Quran says this. This is what the Quran says. Surah 4, Ayah 82. Your God loves killing children. Your God loves killing Listen to this. Do they not consider the Quran carefully? Well, as it happens, yes, we do. Had it been from other than Allah, they would surely have found therein many a contradiction. And we have found contradictions in the Quran, which means by the Quran's own standard, it's false. And if it is false, it is not from God. So Women every Muslim children, now needs to I will find in your Bible, look God. again your God at the claims of the Injil. Answer the question. Where is Muhammad in the Quran? In the Injil. Where is Muhammad in the Injil? Where is Muhammad in the Injil? No one can answer. No one. Where? 
He said it was a void question. It's a question that came from his Quran. So he just said his Quran was void. Answer my question. Answer my question. The fact of the matter is, answer my question. Muslims need to look again at what they have been told about the Injil. Because you have been lied to. All the time. You don't have they the have Injil. taken what Muslims believe about the Quran the and you they have King applied James. it and they have applied it to the New Testament as if these He's things the are the equivalent. The yeah. oh. What we Christians believe about our holy Injil, about our gospel, is not the same as what Muslims believe about the Quran, which means that the standards of judgment are different. To a Muslim, it matters that you can say who wrote it, when they wrote it, that it stays the same, that every word of it is from God, and that none of it was written by men. That matters if you believe what Muslims believe about the Quran. But we don't believe the same about the Gospels. We believe something different. We believe that the Gospels were written by a religious community inspired by a historical event. And this is the historical event. That a group of Jews who followed a teacher called Yeshua, who we translate as Jesus the Christ, they believed that he was the Messiah. They believed that he was killed. And that they believe that on the third day he rose again. And this community existed before any book of the New Testament any of the letters, any of the Gospels. They were all written later by Christians to Christians about what Christians already believe. So the question that you need to ask is not who wrote it, but why did they write it? That's the question you need to answer. Why did they write about the resurrection? Pagan, pagan. That is pagan. the question you need to answer. Coke dealer, dirty coke dealer. Hey, Bob, talk about pagan. He's responsible for yeah. cocaine. He's against it, apparently. He's He's people people are responsible for so the brother the yeah, yeah. has called yeah. my brother yeah. a dirty yeah. Mexican yeah. cunt <laughs> and a pagan yeah. because yeah. he's a racist yeah. like yeah. the rest of the yeah. Dawa yeah. team here. Yeah. They are here calling yeah. Christians Dirty Mexican cunts. Yeah, he said that. They were pricks. That's Islam for you here in Nepal. That's right, that's Islam. And what inspired that racism? Who? Muhammad calling Ethiopians raisin heads. Bye. That's right. Bye. What did Christian do for black people? Of his racist prophet. That's right. No, did Christianity get rid of racism? <laughs> he enslaved tens of millions of Africans in the Islamic slave trade, the only slave trade that still exists in Africa today is the Islamic slave trade. Right. Hey, you can find it in the Islamic Republic of Sudan, you can find it in the Islamic country of Chad, you can find it in the Islamic country of Mauritania. The place where you can still buy black children as slaves is in the Arab Islamic slave markets. Now, coming back to the topic, the claims of the gospel is that the Messiah, Jesus Christ, rose from the dead on the third day. The question that all of you must answer is why? Why would people make that claim? What would convince you that a man that you knew was dead had risen from the dead? What would convince you? 
I guarantee the answer is that I saw it with my own eyes, I touched it with my own hands. The people in ancient antiquity were no less familiar with death than we are. They understood death. They encountered death. They knew death. So they wouldn't go and claim that a man had risen from the dead unless something had convinced them that it was true. The question of who wrote the Gospels, whilst being an important question, is not the right question. The question that is the right question is, are the claims of the Gospel true? Did a man rise from the dead on the third day? And if he did, then that means the claims that he made about himself are also true. Because the resurrection is the seal of the claims of the Gospel. Muslims, you're asking the wrong questions because you're assuming that the Gospel has to be like the Quran. And it isn't. And it doesn't have to be. <clears throat> so the brother asks, when is our Lord returning? In the Perusia. Our Lord said that no one knoweth the day nor the hour. No one knoweth the day nor the hour. It isn't for me to know. It isn't for anyone to know. But our Lord will return and how as Christians must we respond to this doctrine in parable after parable Christ tells us that our response to the return of Christ is to busy ourselves with the vocations that God has given us to do the duties and the responsibilities that God has given you you must do with diligence sincerity, honour, faithfulness, fidelity. This is how you respond to the imminent return of our Lord. That you follow the vocation that he has given you. So now you must ask yourselves, how do you find that vocation? I'll give you some ways. One, does it contradict the Bible? If it does, don't do it. Two, do you have a passion to do it? Is it something God has put in your heart? Three, do you have the skill to do it? You might have the passion to be a footballer, but if you can't kick a ball straight, you're not called to be one. Four, do you have the opportunity to do it? You might have the passion to be a journalist, but if you have no means to be a journalist, it's not your vocation. Five, when you do it, does it make you a better Christian? If you are someone who is a journalist working for a newspaper, but the way that you make your stories get through the editors is to lie, then you became a worse Christian in the process of being a journalist. That is not your vocation. Six, what do the Council of Saints say? Do they look at you, your spiritual fathers and mothers, your brothers and sisters who know you well, and say to you, yes, Brother Mark, this is what God is calling you to do? Or do they discourage you from doing it? Seven, does the world persecute you for following your vocation? The world will hate the follower of Jesus. This is what Christ promised us. Those of the world, those in the dominion of the devil, will oppose those who are following Christ. Seven ways that you can identify your vocation. Praise the Lord.